Maybe that'd be helpful. <laughs> okay. <sighs> we are here. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, okay. Sorry. Last weird noise, I promise. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and roll for disbelief on that. <laughs> <laughs> with advantage. With yes. advantage. I was just going to say with advantage. I would agree with you, but we'll try. We'll hold them in as best I can. <laughs> All right. Take us away, Anna. <sighs> All right. Thank you for having us here, Poopwitch, and congratulations on smashing your fundraising goal and raising, as of right now, according to the numbers, $89,958.83 for survivors. What? Um, I didn't know we crossed 80 already. Holy yep. moly, that's amazing. <sighs> yeah, so welcome everyone to our Streaming for Survivors panel, Cultivating Sin Consent and Safety in Digital Spaces. My name is Anna, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm coming to you this evening from the unceded and traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil people. Wave of Rape Crisis Center is also located on these lands that have been stolen and colonized with the name Vancouver. And I'm excited to be amongst people from across Turtle Island tonight, and I encourage everyone to explore whose lands you are on and to support land back movements in your community. So I'm the Educational Outreach Project Lead here at WEVA, and I'm so excited to be the moderator for this evening and to spend the next hour with so many incredible activists and folks from the streaming com community. Um, I am very, very new to the streaming world. And so when my team at WEVA asked me to moderate this panel, it was very overwhelming learning about raids and Twitch <laughs> and Discord, <laughs> um, but I've enjoyed dipping my toes into this vibrant community, and I'm very excited to learn and grow alongside everyone here in the chat tonight um, as we explore what consent looks like in digital, in digital spaces and how systems of oppression threaten the safety of those who share a virtual space. So I know that everyone is eager to jump into what is sure to be a very dynamic and dare I say spicy conversation. But before I pass it over to the panelists, I have a few housekeeping points. So first of all, uh, thank you so much to Twitch for featuring us on the front page. What an exciting moment for survivors. And in an effort to have a lively and respectful conversation, we will be keeping the things PG-13 this evening. Uh, we will not be taking questions in the chat, um, but we encourage people to engage with the chat. And if you learn something or feel moved to support survivors and join WEVA on our journey to create a future free from violence, please consider making a gift. The donate link will be featured in the chat. So let's help Poopwish crush her fundraising goals and support survivors of sexualized violence. No gift is too small, just $20, oh, $35 and uh, funds an hour of support on WEVA's 24 hour crisis and information line. And last housekeeping for everyone who's here tonight, I have to let you know, I live with a couple parrots. So if you hear bird noises and screaming in the background, <laughs> I apologize. It's, I really can't control it. Um, I'll do amazing. my best. Um, Can I say same, that? but those would be my kids. So you're good. Yeah. <laughs> so perfect. Weird noises all around for everybody. There we go. Okay, so let's start with a round of introduction. So if everyone could please share your names, your pronouns, social media handles, land acknowledgement if you're comfortable sharing and if you could answer this opening question what is your favorite thing about your twitch community so i will start with i'll call on someone and then you can pass it on to the next person so i'll start with char Hi everybody, I'm Charlene Bayer. I go by Char. My pronouns are she, they, and I am Weva's um, grants and major gifts coordinator. I was also, if you're from the Poop Coven, I was the DM for the D&D stream. Um, I DM for Tabletop Titties, which is live every Tuesday on Twitch at uh, Tabletop Titties, 7 p.m. And Love that name. Um, oh. <laughs> thanks. Best name ever. <laughs> I'm from the unceded territories of the Sequetmic First Nations in British Columbia, and I'm so excited to be here today. And um, my favorite thing about the Twitch community, I mean, right now, it's how they show up for survivors. Holy cow. <laughs> yes. Static. We, everyone's been crying all week. Um, it's been so, so unimaginable the amount of support that everyone's been uh, giving to survivors of sexualized violence. So incredible. And I'll pass it off to Vanessa. 
Alrighty, so my name is Vanessa, but I go on everything, Twitter, Twitch, the whole nine as Pleasantly Twisted. Please, for the love of everything, stop spelling twisted with balls. I can't keep saying I don't know who that is. <laughs> now, I found your Twitter, but it seems like it's empty. That's not, that's not me. It's Pleasantly <laughs> Twisted, but T-W-S-T-D, instead of spelling it like a normal human being, I completely <laughs> think that's my fault. Um, I will be transparent in saying that I do not know the, uh, the territory that I occupy, but I do respect and acknowledge that I am residing on Occupy colonized land. So that is something that I'm going to look into and try and be a little bit better about because it's something I never gave a lot of thought to. But I just know that the overwhelming majority, especially of the United States, is it is is colonized, y'all. We got to come to terms with it. It's colonized. Um, <clears throat> my favorite thing about my Twitch community. Oh Jesus. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of spots to pick from. I got a lot of little goblins in my place, which I didn't expect at all, like at all at all. But I love the diversity of my entire space because we have a little bit of everything. We have a lot of POC, we have neurodivergent people, we have disabled people, we have the whole nine. And it kind of stands to me as an example of, you know, all of this stuff can actually work together, but everyone involved has to be willing to try. So don't think that, oh, well, it's because of this thing. No, no, everyone has to be willing to try. And that even includes your leaders, that includes the people in charge, that includes the people at the top, the whole nine. And I think that the wine cellar, that's that's the name of my community. Hi, we're the wine cellar. We drink wine a lot, <clears throat> a lot. And um, <laughs> that's just kind of, it's kind of like a really big reminder to me that the work that we're doing is very much worth it. And we see it every day. And I am going to pass the mic. I, I feel like I'm morally obligated to pass it to Cypher. Oh, thank you. Uh, hi. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I wasn't ready. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Tanya. Uh, Cypher Tier everywhere on the Internet. And uh, I live in Chicago, so I know we're living on stolen and unceded land. I don't know to which uh, tribes that Chicago originally belonged to, but our city name is a name that was stolen from the indigenous population. So I, too, will look into that so I can be better about it. Um, our community, our community likes to see a goal and go, that's cute. You thought that goal was going to last, did you? <laughs> and uh, that's what happened when we were fundraising for Weva. You know, we, we had some silly D&D. &D. We had fun. We rescued kittens. And the community was like, cool. That's nice. You have a goal. We got you. But other than being very generous and very kind, our community is awesome, international, very... I'm going to use diverse, but also inclusive, because... I look up and we have folks from everywhere and some days I'm just like, how did I get here? So I'm not going to cry because I almost started crying. Um, <laughs> I'll cry with you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try not to. Also, I apologize. I sound like a frog and uh, I'm going to pass it over to Raven. Hi. I was not ready either, but I said hi anyway. Hello. Uh, I'm Raven. Y'all can find me wreck it Raven everywhere except on TikTok. It's wreck it dot Raven. Not a long story, just an embarrassing one. Um, my pronouns are they, she, she, they, uh, please use them interchangeably. Um, I, again, am one of those where I don't know the land that I live on. I do know it's colonized. I do know there were at least two tribes around here. I don't want to mispronounce them, um, but I do know that for sure. Um, and the favorite thing about my community is probably our ability to adapt and evolve. Um, I have curated with the help of my community, another, you know, diverse and inclusive space. And I really love that we hold each other accountable. So if I mess up, I know my community is going to call me out. And if they're calling me out, it means I did something and I have to reflect and I expect that of them as well. So just knowing that we have that relationship where if somebody messes up, we can say, yeah, we did. And it's okay to make mistakes. We know that our defining factors are in how we approach the situation after learning that we may have done harm. Um, and I am going to pass it to Poop Witch. 
thanks. Um, and I'm, I, even though I went through everybody, I'm still like, what should I say? <laughs> um, so I'm Poop with Jex or Haley. A lot of people are like, should I really call you Poop? Like, you really want me to call you Poop? I'm like, you can, but if you don't want to, you could also call me Haley. Um, I did actually do research about the indigenous lands I live on. I'm not going to say the exa exact tribe. I live on a very specific subset, but I live in New York. And um, I'm so glad that Wave introduced me to acknowledging the um, indigenous tribes that we all reside on. I I love that um, Weva cares so passionately about the indigenous people and that it's so closely tethered to Weva's platform in so many different ways. And it's incredible. And I do implore you, it's fascinating. It's incredible. It's heart wrenching. And I think it makes you appreciate and acknowledge what we have, what was taken and how to give back to those communities. So it's an, it's an incredible thing. And I highly encourage you all to look into it because I did not know either. And it, it's fantastic and really not cool either though. Um, so I am a charity centered variety streamer. Um, if you like a lot of high energy and chaos and no filter and inclusivity and I call it spicy wholesome because we're wholesome in our nature but I have no filter. <laughs> you will like it in here and I, I want everyone when they come into my community to feel like they're a part of something bigger, that you're not a number on a screen, but you are each an individual person giving me your time, your energy, which is precious. It is yours. It is indebted to nobody. And it will never cease to amaze me that you all are here, that everyone who's watching is here because all of every content creator here and so many more, there are millions of us are sensational. So I am humbled and honored for each of your time for each of your energy and i'm so grateful for this opportunity so thank you all for being here <laughs> thanks. Thanks. yes so thank you all for introducing yourselves i can tell you all really care about your community so this is gonna be a very interesting conversation when we dive into our questions so let's get into it so our first question is what does consent and safety in digital spaces mean to you anyone want to jump in first or shall i call on you you can't put it out there like that because everyone was already dressing <laughs> up to be like, let's see who talks first. And you're like, or I'll call you. And it's like, oh no, she she said the thing. Oh no, she's gonna say it. Um, what it means to me, I feel is like, it's about respect. It really, really truly is a, a aspect of respect. It's about understanding and knowing and seeing that just because you are experiencing X, Y, Z, doesn't mean that everyone around you is also experiencing it or ready to be exposed to that. Uh, if I can get a little bit more personal about it, I am a actual survivor of sexual assault in the child abuse realm. Mm. And I don't talk about that, not because I wanna keep it bottled up, but because I understand and realize that that is something that people have to opt into or something that people have to be ready to listen to or to talk about. And like the forum we're in right now, obviously the, the the charity that's that's the work they do so i'm probably pretty okay to talk about it of course. but on a regular everyday setting thinking about how some people don't consider that it's a violation of consent because not everyone is always going to be ready to talk about those things or indulge those things or engage those things or it might even be triggering to other people which is another big part that people don't think about but i don't mm -hmm. i don't i'm not going to talk for everyone drink water <laughs> Honestly, I, I agree, right? Um, I know for me, uh, part of what I do on my stream is I have difficult conversations. That's why I have a very steady like command that my mods know, like if we're about to get into something, there's a trigger warning, right? Mm -hmm. So it is about respecting people's boundaries and things that may upset them. And I will count down if I know that something I'm going to say is going to be hard for somebody to hear. So I'll say, these are the triggers, this is the warning, we count down so that way people can mute, they can leave, and then my mods will go ahead, put the trigger warning in the chat and make sure that when we are done talking about it, they, they inform people. It is about finding these ways to respect boundaries because at the end of the day, we don't get to say what hurts somebody else that is not up for us to decide. So it is about making sure that those conversations are happening being honest being open being able to allow people in your space to have boundaries and say when you are crossing them and feel comfortable doing so mm. i also feel like something for me that i struggle with is 
the ability to lay a boundary down and then because I'm a people pleaser and I don't know if any of you guys relate to that but that feeling of I put a boundary down and it's crossed and now what do I do because it's my fault in a way that I let the boundary be crossed in the first place and then it becomes this conversation that happens and I think the comfortability of others is so disregarded sometimes you you don't actually you you feel your own feelings you're not maybe thinking of how other people feel and boundaries are constantly pushed and crossed and it's something I struggle with on being able and I appreciate Raven's advice is like having a countdown for triggers and being mindful of other people which I try to do as well it's so hard because in this space people are so concerned with their feelings that they sometimes forget that other people live their own lives and other people have their own experiences that they endure so it's incredibly that's what I challenge with personally is how to set a boundary hold that boundary but also not try to trigger anyone who's like I needed to talk to you you're a safe space and now I feel like you know I feel like I can't talk to you now so that's where I get that confusing conflicting feeling about that um other than what everyone already said it's it's also the the group dynamic of at least of like the stream community the discord community and Mm. being able to go to people and go hey the thing you said wasn't cool or have you considered that just because let's say you can run out and buy like a brand new macbook not everyone in the discord can do that consider the economic privilege you have or consider xyz privilege you have or just did you think before you type this in the discord and uh one thing i really appreciate like about vanessa space is the context corner and the ability to have here's the place to discuss this stuff and it doesn't like because again it comes down to consent i may be having a bad day and maybe i in my own way i let's say talk about the confirmation here is Here's this channel, go talk about this. I can opt out of that channel, whether it's my Discord, someone else's Discord, and having those compartmentalized spaces where if I've got the spoons for it, I can jump in, I can engage, do whatever, and then I can dip out. But it's also, and this is the part a lot of people don't like to talk about, knowing when to let people go and knowing when to say, you know, it's been great, but this space and your way of interacting, behaving are no longer a match because we've had to do that in prior communities of like, hey, the greater good will be greater once you're gone. And it's not like a, we hate you, just you can't be here. Mm. I see Vanessa like tune it up to talk. <laughs> There's a reason they got that whole phrase of, you ain't gotta go home, but you can't stay here. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. and, and, yeah. and I think that kind of like ties the entire conversation together too, where it's like, it's about understanding the boundaries, the safety, the need to have like those trigger warnings, those content warnings, anything that you can do to help amplify that safety in and of itself, I feel like is a boundary. And when you have people who look at those types of things, those tools that you've put in place to try and make your space as safe as possible and still violate them, it's, it's not an easy decision. I've had to do this in the wine cellar too, where there are people who need help. There are people who are part of those com- those uh, conversations and communities and whatnot. But if it's not a fit, you still have to think about your safety and your well-being in mm. the context of the entire conversation too. And kind of echoing a little bit of poop witch too. I, I don't like the sensation. I don't think anyone likes the no, sensation but, yeah. of yeah. kicking someone out. Or yeah. having a yeah. ban, unless like yeah. you know you're coming in on bigotry. Then at that case, yeah, you know we have words. No. For that. Right. No, right? No, yeah, we have words for that. When it's that but, gray area. Yeah, but when it's that gray yeah. area of do they mean well? Is this unintentional? Et cetera, et cetera. Right. And it just hits that fine point where none of us feel good about the idea of wow, I have to kick this marginalized person out of my space. But your safety and your kind of boundaries are what reign in that conversation. And if they're being violated, that's that's all there is to that, to that conversation, like point right. blank, period. And it just, it's a lot to wrestle with and there is no absolute right or wrong answer on a lot of those things too. Right. And I think just going off of that is that you don't have to have a reason. You don't owe anyone a reason necessarily of why you're banning them. It could be as simple as Vanessa said, you feel like your your boundaries are being, you're uncomfortable, your comfortability, your mental health is so imperative and that can be enough. And that's what I have been working with myself is like, This person is just making me uncomfortable. Their vibe is not right. I can't put my finger on it sometimes, but I can just, you can just, we all intrinsically have that feeling of like, this person is not hearing and heeding my concerns. 
it's time. And when you do finally make that decision, not feeling guilty about it is another one that I struggle with too. I, I feel like I'm putting my feelings before someone else's. That's always an uncomfortable sort of feeling, but we have to do that in this space. There's just too many voices and feelings and you have to make sure you are taking care of yourself as well and that's something I personally struggle with like every day (laughs) so it's very hard (laughs) and going with what you were saying about being that people pleaser I totally am too um but with boundary setting it's something that gets easier the more that you do it the more that you exercise Mm -hmm. your boundaries and as content creators we in a way where a big reflection of ourselves is our community. So when people find us for the first time and they get, they come and chat and then all of a sudden they're seeing some whack shit, like <laughs> you, you gotta not, we have to do something. And it, the best way to do that is to just, I use my band hammer freely and all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You're wielding get it all out. over. <laughs> we love that. We love yeah. that. Yes. Get out. <laughs> I love that. I'm working on that. <laughs> Amazing. And I can really tell that you put, you all put a lot of thought and effort into keeping your spaces safe for your audience and for yourself. And I know that some of you have already mentioned this, but um, what are some tools that you've used to cultivate consent and safety in your online community? Um, I, a friend showed me how to do this, but we've actually got a waiting room in the discord and I keep follower mode on. I know today's fun meta was, oh, don't have follower only mode on. (laughs) I'm a black chick on the internet. (laughs) That's the end of. So, you know, people have to come in and they can't just wander in off the digital street. And they have to say how they found the place, et cetera. And I block a lot of people on Twitter. Mm. Some people will try to interact with something someone else has retweeted and they're like, I'm blocked. Shouldn't be following trash folks. Because I've used block lists because I've been harassed and stalked on both on Twitch and Twitter. Um, And having a good mod squad, but also being very deliberate in who you pick as a moderator um, and being able for them to tell you you're making a mistake, you're wrong, that you went too far and you being able to have that same conversation and not just doing things off the cuff. And I freely admit, I have done things off the cuff out of anger, either in a stream or in my Discord, and I too am learning and growing. So having a community that will allow you that grace to grow, but also not let you get away with and go, oh, it was one time. Oh, you were super angry. Mm. Because we all have bad days. We all get mad. We all get angry. But that's never an excuse for being a bad person. Mm. And if you don't listen to your moderators, why do you have them there? And they're also sort of the 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 first faces you see, right? When you enter into a community, they're they are a representation of you. Like you, your moderators, you should you know have a mutual trust. They should hold you accountable. They should help you work through convoluted, complicated situations, and they are a reflection of you. So if you have somebody in your community who's that sort of like borderline, they're probably not the person you'd want to moderate. You'd want somebody who you know understands your vibe, understands people's boundaries, respects your boundaries, and they are the face of your community. They are the backbone of your community. So your mods are like your first line of defense. You know, do you, I feel like that kind of makes sense, right? Totally. <laughs> okay. I, I feel too like the moderation thing in particular, first and foremost, to answer part of it, the tools part. Yeah, we have a, a channel called Reservations specifically, mm-hmm. and that's where you go before you get someone to give you the role so you can see the rest of the Discord point mm-hmm. blank period. I, I don't, if you're not rolled up or specifically, this is kind of petty, but also part of the problem. Um, if you're in my Discord and you can't even be arsed to read the, the welcome channel that tells you how to get a role, so you can see everything, you're already on a bad start. But Mm. then additionally, that is a safety tool, especially when we had things like the uh, hate race that go on on a very regular basis here, making sure that people get in, don't come in and do wild things. There's a guy I modded four years ago that full transparency, this was a white dude. So this is somebody that's not of like a lot of the impacted marginalized groupings and whatnot. Had people join his Discord, no rules, no regulations, nothing, came in, found out how to actually trigger text-to-speech, and then had it spamming the N-word on his stream <gasps> for 10 minutes straight. And I was like, nope, curtains closed, not doing it. So yeah. you, you have to go through the reservations first for to I- get into my space. Oof. And then kind of on the conversation with moderators, I feel too like 
you have to be willing to have moderators that vibe with you, understand you and get you, but then also give them the space to challenge you mm, yeah. and kind of have them step up and say, hey, I understand where you're at with this. I get why you're kind of pissed off, but let me go ahead and offer an additional perspective that may have went over your head a little bit. Mm. And like my mods have taught me many, many things. They, they've taught me about things in terms of ableism. They've taught me things about like neurodivergent things. They've taught me things about like the way that I handle some of my speech and whatnot and how it does kind of read off as more aggressive than one would anticipate even after watching my channel for a year or longer. Mm. And, and listening to those bits and pieces makes me a better person and making me the lead of my community a better person makes a safer community. And it makes those kind of clear boundaries much, much harder to deny and say, well, we weren't sure about, no, 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 no. We've had this conversation before. We have the outline for it. We know what we meant by this. Mm -hmm. And then kind of also, like I said, taking, swallowing the pride of understanding that sometimes you do just have to kick stuff out. That, and that's that's in and of itself a safety tool. You have to kick stuff out, be it people who just don't vibe, people who don't get it, or it be it like sea lions who want to come in and be like, yeah, but I just want to ask questions just to make sure. It's, Girl, I'm not dealing with you. Get out. Go. <laughs> but no, he answered it already. I'm not dealing yeah. with this further. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of resolve and stuff too. And that particular tool takes time to get accustomed to. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of to just like piggyback, you know, on everybody else's points. I, I have a, a in, in my chat or in my Discord, it's called New Blood, right? Because we're the underworld, we're edgy. Who's counting? I'm not. But so we have New Blood and we actually have a role specifically for anybody who enters that gets it. And my, me and my moderators actually have to go through the list and verify them. So they have to have their Twitch account linked. If they have a Twitter, they have to have their Twitter account links. So that way we can actually see who these people are and know if we've seen them in the community. So that way they're not, you know, just some random, right? Mm. And then and only then are they able to have access to the Discord and they don't have access to the full Discord. There's still a certain like amount of channels that they can get to. <laughs> until they you know make themselves part of the community because mm -hmm. that's important for me i don't want p people coming in just to be there like i want you to be a part of the community so that is one of the safety tools i have again having moderators who have my back in all facets because i don't want to have a mod team that's not a f that's not going to tell me when i am messing up because i'm yeah. only human right. and i'm going to mess up and I know things that I do may not vibe with other people. I totally understand that. I know that I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but I need to know when I'm actually going out of my way to be bitter. Because mm. I can. Because I can, you know? So having those things really does make all the difference. I want to know that, honestly, time out. People, for me, are going to be the biggest the biggest support, the biggest tool, if you will, right? Because if I'm curating, curating a space of trust, I need to trust these people. Mm. Not mods, I mean, obviously the mods I hold to a higher standard, but like even people in my community who have like come to me and said, hey, Raven, you know, like you have this shout out thing where it's shouting people out using clips that may be detrimental to somebody, especially, you know, our trans friends who they're pulling clips from, you know, before they started transitioning or, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're not comfortable with that. And I was like, you know what? You're right. So just having the ability, the actual ability to be open and accept feedback and constructive criticism without mm. feeling the need to snap, I think is going to be one of the biggest and best things for curating safety in this, in this space that we find ourselves in. Yeah, and if, and if I can, there was something I saw, I think it was either you and us or someone else that you brought up the point that a lot of people treat the mods were like a best friend badge. I'm like, that I'm waiting for the me. unmute. That was, <laughs> that was the unmute. That was me. No, no, it was a good point because a lot of us, especially when we first start, we don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. Actually, I, I do have to interrupt for a second. It wasn't holding me. I retweeted that from Barefoot Tasha. I have to okay. correct on that. I can't, I retweeted that from Barefoot Tasha. Okay, go ahead. That's all I wanted. No, that's fine. I just, I remember seeing it, but it was also like a month ago and streamer brain. <laughs> um, but <laughs> when you first start, when you start streaming and building your community, because remember, starting a stream, starting a Discord does not make you have a community. It's yeah. the work you put into it. So that goes the same with picking your first mods. Just because you know somebody doesn't mean you know somebody. Mm -hmm. So you need to think about, hey, we're buddies, we can kick it. Does that mean you hold the same values I'm going to hold when, we, when I'm on air? So, and, you know, again... The, I'm, I'm going to be the killjoy of this conversation, I think, of knowing when to say, thank you for your service, but I don't think you're a good fit to be a mod because people change, you change, or just they get a little power hungry. And we've seen, and I've seen that with some people I've had to take the sword from. Mm. Maybe you can compromise and give them a VIP badge if you got those, but it's realizing, like Raven and, and Haley said, those people are the first interaction a lot of people have with your community, especially if someone raids in, if they come in and your mods are not doing the diligence they should, because if you're, you have a mod sword, you should take it seriously. And I mean, that's what I think. I know some people disagree, but you know, I just thought of that as Raven was talking about how a lot of people feel like this is just a badge of show. I know the streamer really well, not I have to show up and do any work. Right. Another tool that I like to use is um, bots in either stream or in Discord that show people's pronouns. Mm, with yes. um, Even with the Zoom call that we're using today, before we started, I asked everyone to make sure that they had their pronouns in their name. It's just a way to make sure that folks don't get misgendered, and it's just a way to normalize everyone having their pronouns, to not have to out anyone. And that's something that I think has started to happen, but I really want to see more of that in online spaces, in digital spaces, just to, to promote the diversity of gender and that nuance and open the conversation if people are willing to and have, have that sort of safety for folks who are not on either end of the gender spectrum. Mm. Yeah, I can really tell, and I appreciate how all of you are really talking about building a community very organically, but also kind of modeling it to what you want and what you want to see as safety in the community. Mm -hmm. And it's very particular because of all the different platforms that you're using. Um, so I want to ask you, what are some strategies that you implement in the digital community to resist rape culture and sexism and other systems of oppression, of systems of oppression online? Oh, you get called out in my channel. <laughs> I'm going to say like I like half of my Twitter space right now because I'm an avid Elden Ring player. I drop kick every single person who comes in wanting to be like, oh, you probably just suck at this game because you're a girl. And I drop off my soul level one run. And it's like I hold parry practice three times a week. Let me know when you're ready. Like, <laughs> like, but I also know that that's not the way for everybody. Like I'm I'm forward. I am very openly aggressive. Like there's no moment that you're going to be like, I'm not sure how Vanessa feels on this. That is a completely false statement. I am very, very forwardly aggressive. And if you come at me incorrect, I will let you know, and you'll know pretty, fr I caught myself, pretty freaking quickly. <laughs> <laughs> pretty freaking quickly. But like, yeah. that's part of it too, though, is like, you have to combat it in however way for it's best for you. I'm very much a verbal person. I don't mind talking it out. I don't mind education. I don't mind spreading the word, but understand that my fuse is short and I have no problem verbally eviscerating you. Like it, it doesn't bother me. And it's kind of, I'm seeing like some questions and commentary about it too in the chat a little bit. It goes back to that respect aspect too, mm -hmm. where it's like, we as activist people, we can kind of start getting a read on whether or not you have a genuine question, concern, or you want education. And I think that it's important as activists to keep that education door open. But at the same time, there's a reason there's also the phrase, uh, what is it? It's something with the big stick. Now that I'm thinking about it and I want to say it, I can't think of it. <laughs> but it's like something about walking with a big stick. And I just... It, there has to be the space to learn. And then there has to be the understanding that I don't have to deal with your sexist or your racist BS. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. It's not required. That is not why I'm on this planet to sit here and combat people who want to constantly be like, go back to the kitchen or this panel is unfair because it doesn't have men on it and things like that. Mm -hmm. I will end your existence. <laughs> bother me. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. No, that's it. I was just saying, yes, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I wish I had one of my fans like in reach. <laughs> Um, but I'll just sit there and keep playing and be like, and if my mods don't get it, I'd be like, oh, I see what we have today. So I will just keep talking and destroy this person while I'm doing whatever I'm doing on stream. And it's like, oh, so this is what we want to do today. Cool. Let's talk about it. I was uh, doing Tokyo Ghostwire early and somebody came in and put in some word salad to try to be sexist, racist, fat phobic and misogynistic all in one go to get also get past auto mod. And I was like, Oh, so that's what we're doing today. You couldn't even do a good racism <laughs> and just keep it moving, get a yeah. screenshot and then talk about it after stream because we've all seen the, Oh, well women have it easy. Femme body people have it easy. You just have to sit there and smile and, and show some cleavage. And I'm like, if that was how it worked, I should have like 10,000 subs. Cause I got some, I got some cleavage if I want to show yeah. it. <laughs> so I'm not great at games, but if that's all I need to succeed, where's where's my 20,000 subs? So. Yeah. The titties I actually... are just stealing all the views. <laughs> viewbies, they're viewbies. God. Oh it is the God. official stealing term. That. Viewbies? That, that conversation viewbies. happens on Twitter once a month. The boobs oh stealing the views. God. It's like the cycle oh, on Twitter. But um, I actually, I think I'm on the other end of the spectrum from the other content creators here because not for anything hardcore. If someone hardcore says something racist, homophobic, hardcore sexist, I'm going to ban them. I'm not going to engage at all. If someone comes in and you, we all have those people who come in and they say something maybe like a sex joke that's funny and I'm like, I see if they're like where, they, they're trying to see the like where the line is, right? I'll maybe give them a one shot pass and I'll see where they're, what their next thing they're going to say is and then I decide. But I, I don't actually engage in trolls. Like I don't feed the trolls because sometimes I feel like the truth is they just want attention, right? So sometimes I feel like when we've had people who come in here and say like, you know, we all have had that get back in the kitchen, whatever. I, I feel like if I give them a response, they got exactly what they wanted. When I've gotten hate rated before and they did it for hours, mm. I they were watching the stream for hours, follow botting, trying to break into the stream for my mods behind the scenes and I were in a full panic and I just kept it together. Nobody knew who was watching the stream would have known that anything was happening behind the scenes because I knew that if I gave them the response that they wanted, they'd probably come back at me again and do it again because I started to cry or I started to get angry. So like, that's how I handle it. But I feel like it also takes a toll on me too, to have to like swallow and bite my tongue. So it's like this weird duality for me. Like, do I engage and kind of give them what they want? And, or do I just say like, I'm not even gonna give it to you. And I'm constantly trying to find that balance. That's where that's where I am. And I, I want a little bit more of Vanessa maybe. Like, I want a little bit more. <laughs> that's I wanna, the thing. But that's come the thing too. I try to explain to people, like when yeah. I was getting hate rated last year, yeah. I tried to put that on the timeline and say, I want people to understand you do not have to have that level of strength. Yeah. Not everyone's gonna have it. I got a whole lot of trauma packaging that I that builds a lot of that for me. Right. And I wouldn't curse anyone with that. Mm -hmm. And how you handle it is gonna be up to, your mileage may vary. Right. I typically am someone that like, if you come in and you're just not even creative, you're not even good with like the funny jokes and stuff trying to be racist, I'll just ban you. I'm like, oh, I'm not even gonna bother reading that. And by the time I even see it in some cases, one of my mods didn't ban it. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. But every now and again, you can get, you can get a Vanessa drag as a treat. <laughs> Every now but and also, again, you can get one as a treat. I also wasn't talking about racism. There's no, oh, no, no, no. line yeah, yeah. for that. You yeah. know those funny people <laughs> come in with like a dad joke that's like on the cusp right. of being funny right. and you're like, no, but like certain things, there's like a hard, like I won't give you even an inch of room. And then there's other things where I'm like, are you trying to be funny? And let's see where it's landing maybe. Like, let's see what your next thing that you say is. I'll give right. you another shot. Like, give me right. give me one more. And then just, kind of go from there. You know? Yeah. Maybe yeah. your first one just was a miss. Yeah, it, it missed slightly. <laughs> it, it didn't hit, hit me in the funny bone. Try again. Let's go. So we'll see. Yeah. I think, I think like I, I'm very, I, I can be very aggressive as well. Right. Because I... I mean, 
like most of us who who stream on this platform were hate rated for hours mm. hours over the course of last summer terrible yeah and so like i do my best not to feed the trolls but i am petty enough to clap back when i feel like it is necessary right. i will put on my whole petty labelle wig and go off <laughs> i don't care i don't care because at the end of the day i know my worth and i have been through far worse right than what these people think that they are going to do to me mm -hmm. and just you know i'm going to put a trigger warning out really quick we are go i'm going to talk about near-death experiences um i almost lost my life in childbirth that was two and a half years ago when you are that close to death's door it changes you it changes you the things that i was worried about once upon a time i am not worried about anymore mm -hmm. i don't care whether people like me or not i am not here for everybody to like mm. i can want you to eat not at my table though love that oh did everyone else just get chills? That was so good. <laughs> Sorry, that was amazing. But, but it's Ooh. true, right? Yeah. So I am going to protect my space because more than anything else, I am the beacon of hope and what humanity should be for two very important people in my life. And those are my kids. They need to know what it's like to be a person who is resilient, who is kind, who is compassionate, who really does seek to do good things, but not at the expense of themselves and their own health. Mm. So I will clap back. If you have something to say about, you know, sexual violence or racism or, you know, just casual, you know, misog misogyny, not in my house. Not in my house, because the change is going to happen with us, right? And I know that the things that I'm doing now, I may not see those those seedlings bear fruit in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But I know that future generations just might. And that's that. Yeah. I'll clap back every time. I don't care. <laughs> Very powerful words. Thank you for sharing your personal story. Of course. Thank you for letting me. Mm -hmm. Tanya, were you going to say something? I was going to, but you know what? I'm going to let that settle because <laughs> the you can eat, but not at my table. I'm stealing it's that. So just so good. Know. Do it. Oh, it is yours. Oh, so that's your that was merch amazing. Sticker. Use it. You use it. Use that as your merch sticker. See, I have yes. the more aggressive one that looks like the ESRB rating, and it's a fist. And it just says the hands are rated E for everyone. And then it has a link to my channel. I love that. <laughs> so like, I'm just... buying that as soon as we're done. Yeah, yep, I, yep. That's, that's my sticker. <laughs> oh, you're the only one that gets that sticker. I haven't made it yet is a problem. Like, oh. it was, it was I just haven't put it in the shop. But yeah, that that line note, that was fire. Just straight yeah, up being like, I want you to eat. Just not, not at, my, at table. my table. That Thank was you. amazing. I, I feel that. Yeah, it was great. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Words of wisdom. Right? So, yeah, what I'm hearing is a lot of like very different but valid ways of finding strategies that work for everyone. And it's powerful to, you know, be in that position, but it also takes a lot, a lot of energy mm -hmm. um, and effort. So um, before I get into my next question, I know that Vanessa has to leave in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So I just want to thank you so much for being here and um, thank you so us. much. Yeah, it's not a problem. Thank you for having me. And, um, for the rest of us on the call who need to find the land that we're occupying, there's a wonderful site called nativeland.ca. Mm -hmm. And I discovered over the course of this call that I am occupying the land of Arafaho. Mm. So just putting that out there but thank you again for having me i do apologize to everyone for like my schedule being an entire disaster and i look forward to watching the remainder of this when i am back for the rest of my evening thank you so much Thanks, for joining Vanessa. us i'm so grateful thank you no thank you bye. bye vanessa okay so as i was saying all this takes so so much energy and this is 
your all all of your individual and like collective efforts to try and ensure safety in your community. So let's flip it a little bit. What do you think then systemically should platforms like Twitch, Twitter, and Discord do, or like what do they need to do to change to better foster safety in online spaces? Oh, I wanted to cuss so bad for this, but I have to be good because we're on our page. <laughs> we're all on our I think you already used it with with I think you already used our one swear um, <laughs> but they need to so I'm gonna say this it will probably kill any chances I have it's some advancement at twitch but I don't care anymore they need to uniformly enforce the TOS because you know trigger warning for stalking and harassment ban evasion on this, ban evasion so on this platform and on twitter i had a stalker that showed up because i was using the lgbt tag and they came in and they swore up and down that their friends didn't get harassed their friends didn't get bothered and i'm like that's cool for you that's not the case for us because i'm a female on the platform and female in the sense of what you see before you not in the fringy style female because i hate that <laughs> yeah. um mm. but you know cis cisgender femme presenting woman who is black and openly saying that i'm queer on this platform and this dude followed me around the platform for two years two years i could not i couldn't host or raid my friends and turned out he's over in Essex. And then some people bless their hearts. And I mean that in the way that you think I do. <laughs> tried to talk to that dude. They tried to talk to him. I'm like, there's no talking to someone like this because he felt very entitled to be in our space. He literally followed me from stream to stream to stream. If I said I was going live, if I hosted a rating one, he was there in their chat or copycat accounts. To this day, he has not been banned off this platform. Wow. I, I I took documentation to Twitch HQ because I was in town for a meeting. This dude still has a channel. Hasn't shown up in almost a year, but there were two Kotaku articles about it. And there were people, maybe copycats, who showed up in the chat using that dude's name. I've had to go through every iteration of banning this name, wow. even ashy characters. And for a while, I almost stopped streaming because I could not get any peace from some dude who made it his mission to harass me every time I went live. And so I looked at these people at Twitch in the face and said, hey, what you gonna do about it? And God asked, do you think it's racially motivated? And I was like, what do you what? think? <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, so, Twitter and like Twitter, I've reported people like when Raven was getting harassed, I was getting harassed, you know, Vanessa got harassed a lot. We were reporting tweets, we were reporting these accounts that were impersonating people and planning out their hate rates in full view of everybody, Andraste and everyone, and nothing happened to them. So they need to actually use the TOS that they keep swearing is a thing that is there. And maybe, maybe just protect the people because we've seen where you know platform we're on doesn't want us to use the word saltine for melanin deficient people mm -hmm. as a swear word as a slur sorry saltine that was funny <laughs> look i had to get around it somehow um it just so, not, <laughs> not a ritz cracker shall we say yeah. yes <laughs> but they didn't get put in the oven like the ritz um right. look they're not brown and toasty what can i say <laughs> Look, I'm I'm about to be 49. I do not care anymore. Um, and Discord too, because I had to turn my Discord DMs to friends only. Mm -hmm. Literally every day, I'd wake up with crypto NFT scams and people swearing that you know I'd won a Discord lottery, and I'm like, why? How do these bots infiltrate? So they're moving from platform to platform. You know, Twitch has gotten better in that we can't. Uh, people can't mass make bots anymore, at least not as bad as it was. Yeah. But look at all the tools we have to put in. How many walls do we need to have to be safe? You know, being on the front page is what my auto mod level three, four, they suggest. Yes, three, which you can't even say the word please. They, they auto modded the word please. It's very strict, but it's still people still can yep. get around it if they're determined enough. It's not oh, even and I got enough. a whole list of people I don't block just from this chat alone. 
Because <laughs> when I was muted and not talking, I was in my channel pre-banning people. <laughs> but I think that's actually one of the things that almost unilaterally all streamers can come together on and because we all come from different backgrounds and everything ban evasion being able to watch someone stream after you have been banned should be gone like i 100 percent, you should not be able to access this person if you have been banned there should not be a way that you can still i've had people constantly trying to ban evade and it is infuriating because it's like, please, I'm, I just please move on. You like hold it in your heart. You're like, I'm begging you. And for someone like Tanya who had to go through two years, endure that for two years, that is unconscionable. That is ridiculous. I'm so sorry that you went through that. That's horrible. There are I, channels here. Oh, go ahead, Raven. No, 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 you're good. You're good. There are channels on Twitch that their sole purpose is to watch other streamers and harass them and make Which fun is, of them. And then right, people bonkers. send clips of these. People have to come out in full force on Twitter, tagging Twitch, what are you doing about this? And then the next day, they'll just be like, not banned, but they'll have like a timeout for like a week. And then they'll just be back doing the same stuff. Right. It drives me bonkers. Yeah. It's, it's terrible because at... At that point, you have people literally creating content out of misery, and that is not content that should be on any platform at all. Um, but to kind of like, you know, touch on the the being able to watch the stream after being banned, like I get that Twitch is a public access website, right? I understand that. And I get the reasons for doing things like not necessarily having to have an account to watch streams. I don't want that gone per se, but if somebody is banned, if we're going to treat this as public, if a person is banned from a public place, they are no longer allowed to reside there at all. Right. It is not any different on the internet. And what we need to understand is Twitch is a reflection of society. And we've seen the societal climate that we are having to navigate currently. It is a mess. So if you are going to put rules in place and then not enforce them, what are you actually doing? You are sending out the message that you are ready and willing to be walked all over and exploited for, you know, personal gain. Right. That's the thing too with Twitch and Twitter and Discord and all these online platforms. When people who are using these platforms are getting harassed, they reach out for help, they're usually left in the dark. And that's just, Twitch is ex prime example. They're making so much money off of content creators that are spending their lives as career streamers. And yet they leave people in a lurch. What are you doing? <laughs> right. Yeah. And it, it gets to the point where some streamers will be potentially in danger in real life, like not just in the digital space, but in real mm -hmm. life. And they are still uh, siding with the people perpetuating, the, in, a, in a way, in an essence, they're still siding with the people who are perpetuating the um, breaking of boundaries, the not getting consent, and ta the violence, both verbal. It can escalate people when they're determined it's scary. And yeah. Twitch should support the content creators who have are why anyone's here in the first place, you yeah. know? Yeah, and kind of like, just to touch on some of the stuff that happened, like I was getting active threats, both on this platform, on Twitter. And I mean, there was a video, there was a video of a bomb threat to me that Twitter did not take down because it did not violate the rules. Wow. But if you had stopped and watched the video, you would have understood that it was very much against TOS. Mm. So I think there needs to be like actual people screening these things. And I know that there are on occasion, but I right. know a lot of that gets sifted through an algorithm. We cannot have just an algorithm for safety. That is not going to work because I've, I listen, I already went off about this, about, you know, Women's History Month and Black History Month on this platform. Mm -hmm. But if you are allowing somebody to create an algorithm, you are programming an artificially intelligent machine and you are doing so with an implicit bias. 
So if this machine is being programmed to learn, they are being programmed to learn in a way that we are with that implicit bias. You can't leave it to a machine to keep people safe, period. I think the systemic change that I really want to see at this point is also just transparency and communication from these platforms about what they're doing. Right now, there's so much lack of trust in the community, which I is like totally valid and des is deserved. But something has to happen. Creators have been left alone too long now to try and solve their own problems, to try and create their own safety with their own moderators, with their own anti-hate raid measures that they have ready at the drop of a hat that we had to prepare today because we were on front page. Who knows what might happen? And the transparency and communication, I think, is like a step that can be taken by everyone that will actively help us all in moving forward with safety in digital spaces. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And yeah. I will just to kind of like challenge that that a little bit. I know there are things that can't be said, right? I get that. I know that we are not going to want to have information about safety tools like fully transparent and out there because then the people who have that information are going to work against Use it. it. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. But you want where you're intelligent people or, you know, maybe I'm assuming you <laughs> can find a way to say what you need to say in a way that appeases the people who are looking to you for answers without revealing your full hand. Yes. That's what that, PR is for. That's 100%, I think, Twitch's biggest, one of their biggest downfalls is they don't give enough transparency so that we feel safe. And then we end up feeling like, <laughs> not only are we not safe, but we're not safe and then you're not telling us what you're doing about it so then we feel double not safe and mm -hmm. i completely agree raven if they we they can't give out all the information we don't want them to we're not asking mm -hmm. that we're asking for you to just put out a tweet that says listen this is what we're doing not in detail we're working on it we hear you we're there for you and i think that would help a lot of us not feel like we're sort of alone in the ocean right? yeah we need human answers yeah yeah, okay. I actually gave a chat. I gave a chat. Wow, I'm thinking in Twitch terms. I gave a talk. <laughs> I gave a talk at Twitch in 2016, 2017. And one of the things I suggested was a follow up to a report. And it's 2022, and we're finally getting that. Mm -hmm. Because whenever you submit a report, it's just off in the void. I don't know what happened. And, you know, this is probably one of the few times I'll give Twitter credit for doing something right. But at least Twitter, you'll get a, yes, it violated TOS, no, it didn't. We may not always agree with it, but at least they tell you, we mm. did something with your message. Got it. And Twitch finally has started doing that of, hey, we reviewed this, we took an action. Now, I don't agree with not knowing what the action is, because if I'm getting harassed and I report someone, I would like to know if they got banned. It's just like a we took action, their channel's gone. We took action, they're banned for a week or whatever. So that maybe I can breathe for a week. Maybe I can go live and not worry about this person and their cronies showing up in my chat. Yeah. But a lot of people and conversations I've had act like if it's a all or nothing. If right. they don't lay the whole 52 cards out and tell us every step of the way, then it's not enough. Mm -hmm. But having worked with sensitive information in day jobs, you can never do that. Look at what the bad faith actors did and the harassers did with the hate raids. Mm -hmm. As soon as people put out a bot, they countered the bot. You know, yeah. people were getting harassed and stalked and, and people coming into their discords. You know, Vanessa told a story about someone coming in and using text to speech malevolently. So mm -hmm. We also just need to train people to treat others like human beings and not entertainment machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah. we are human beings and you came to my house. I didn't invite you here. You showed up at the door. And that's the part that a lot of us seem to forget you know, when we talk about, you know, entertainment, when we talk about, um, you know, streamers, when we talk about YouTubers, TikTokers. All we know is the facade that we're allowed to see. That's all we get. And what I show you on stream, what I show you on Twitter is a very small part of who I am as a human being. But people take that and they make a version of you that does not exist, except in their head. And that's their justification because you are no longer a person, you're a persona. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it's and I think a big part of that is how we've gotten here because they don't look at us as people, especially yeah. when someone's really big. Like people see you as the the hate raid person, Raven. They don't see Raven, the human, the mom, yeah. the person who has to get up every day and take care of two small humans. You know, Charlene and Anna and Haley, people don't see you as humans. I mean, the fact that we have people here going, oh, there's no men on this panel. I'm going to use our one swear. Fuck that dude. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my fan? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. There, There's a level of almost like dissociation, right? Like you are no longer a person, you're a number because a lot of the times they look at your numbers and that's what they see. Right. The person behind that number is no longer a thing that exists. Mm-hmm. Right. You're the check mark. Right. If I can, get, like, listen, if I we gonna look, we gonna stay on this call. When we're done. We gonna catch up. Listen, yes, but if I had time for every time somebody said, "Oh, Raven's changed since that check mark," I would be rich. Like you didn't know me before the check mark. How dare? How very dare? Can I actually also just say that I uh, I got partnered recently. I got partnered Ooh. after being a content creator for five years. I got partnered like a month ago, I think, and. I have said over and over that it is just the first door that opens. It is not the the last door. It is not the end all be all. And it should change nothing. You should support that person because they shouldn't have changed. That check mark does not define you or your content. And the problem, the reason why the check mark holds so much weight is because of what these incredible content creators said. People see it and that's all they care about now. And it didn't, ch- it shouldn't change in any way. You should, it should be like, all right, let's go. Now we're gonna really, you know, make moves and hustle and do our thing because it's just the first barrier, right? Mm-hmm. And companies only care about that check mark. And it's, you're more than that. Your worth is more than that. You are more than however companies try to allocate you in any way. Like your worth is more than your numbers forever. And I've been saying this because they forced me into do a, do a poop nerd push. And I was like, I don't even need the check mark. And they, my, the poop coven was like, you're doing it. And then we did it. And then everyone was like, do you feel different? I'm like, no, I feel like, yay, we checked this off the list. Now let's keep hustling. Let's keep going. And that's yeah. how I looked at it. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I think it says a lot that these platforms, like the success of these platforms are built off of the backs of your work. Like, I think what I'm hearing is that there's this like amnesia in this digital space that it's peopled by real people. It's not just like a digital icon of a persona. There's more to it than that. Um, and that, you know, you all have such great input because you've been here for so long. You've seen how it evolves, evolves. Mm. And so, you know, people like platforms should, should really be listening to you. Um, but so, I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> hope for the best. <laughs> and I know that Um, The world can be a dark place and digital spaces can be a dark place. And it's very easy to get trapped in that downward downward spiral. But as I've heard from all of you here right now, you are here to create change. You're actively creating change. So to kind of close our discussion, my last question is, what does a future of safe digital spaces look like to you? I find it kind of sad that we all have to really think about this. <laughs> um, for me, I can start my stream and not get, you know, hate and being told to go back in the kitchen. I can write about video games safely again. I stopped writing about video games and being a game journalist because of harassment. I can, you know, not be judged on what I look like if I got makeup on, not makeup on. And my opportunities are not tied to those check marks. Mm. because Mm -hmm. this is my eighth year on Twitch and fifth of being a partner. And I squeaked in right before all the achievements came in, but I know had I not been able to talk to a real live human at TwitchCon that year, I probably still wouldn't have it. Mm. But I also know that my content speaks for itself and the check mark doesn't invalidate me any more than, you know, the Twitter check mark does. Right. I think for me, safe digital spaces continues to look like me and you 
and everybody on this panel, right? It looks like people just being respectful and allowing the evolutions to happen because nothing is going to stay the same forever. And when we understand that as a, a species, the better off we'll be. Mm -hmm. And safe spaces looks like people being held accountable and then not having to do something shady like post receipts. It is okay to mess up. Like I, I just, I feel like this space, the content creation space, the gaming space just needs to breathe, right? Because at the end of the day, whether you see me as human or not, that's exactly what I am. I'm a whole person behind these platforms. I have a whole life that is equally as complex and difficult and, and sometimes traumatic as yours, you know? Don't take away from that because it is a beautiful curse to be human. Mm. That's what it looks like for me. Just people really understanding that at the end of the day, whatever differences we have, we can still have, because I'll, I'll say it again. I can want you to eat, just not at my table. Mm. I don't have to see eye to eye with you to understand that you're a, per a person and I don't have to vibe with you to understand that you have things going on in your life too. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. I guess for me, um, I hope that these conversations continue. I really do. I hope that Twitch will allow content creators to highlight important conversations like this because these conversations are imperative. They are integral to all of our lives as content creators, as female presenting people, as marginalized communities. These conversations need to happen. They need to keep happening and Twitch needs to keep giving opportunities for these things to happen. I hope Twitch continues being more and more transparent and listening to us when we say, please do this. We don't need this. We want, need this. We don't care about that. We appreciate you're trying something else, but we need <laughs> this. And um, I just hope that you, more and more creators on here will create corners on Twitch that are pockets of joy and kindness. And that is what you step through when you open the door. You're not um, being blown back by toxicity and people whose foundation of their house is decrepit and trash. Um, I want people to feel like you open my door, you open any of these incredible content creators doors and you are met with joy and happiness and safety and you feel like you are in a good place. And that's what we need more doors to open. And that's what you see when you open it. So that's what I hope will continue. The future of safe digital spaces for me looks like folks being called out, but also being called in. Mm -hmm. And I think Raven, you said it really well, like everyone, we're all learning. We're mm -hmm. all, we all make mistakes. It's, it's being called in and learning from your mistake and how you can better yourself and your community and your content and just create that safety that's needed for everybody to be able to thrive online. Since the pandemic, I'm a chronically ill person. I'm high risk. I've basically lived online for two and a half years now. And that safety has been so critical for my mental health, for my spiritual health, my physical health. Is, is all based off of my interactions online right now because I can't be with anyone in, in IRL, as they say. And I just, <laughs> yeah, I just want everyone to know that it's okay to make mistakes. Just don't make that mistake again. Learn from it, move forward, and be the better person for it. Yes. So I'm hearing a lot of being able to wholly be yourself, to evolve, to grow, to learn to model and be reflected in the world that you want to see in online spaces and to keep the conversation going. And what an incredible conversation we've had tonight. Amazing, yes! everyone. Yes! <laughs> um, I wanna thank everyone here, Vanessa, Haley, Tanya, Raven, and Shar for participating in today's discussion and for your constant dedication to not only supporting survivors and marginalized community members, but your dedication to creating safer birds <laughs> safer <laughs> digital spaces for people of all genders 
Thank you to Twitch for putting us on the front page for this event. And of course, thank you to the Poop Coven for your amazing support and for, uh, of our fundraising efforts all week. Tonight's panel was part of our week-long digital fundraising campaign, Streaming for Survivors. If you learned something today and feel inspired to set up and create change, we encourage you to donate and help us achieve our goal of raising $100,000. Everyone has a role to play in ending sexualized violence, and we encourage you to stay in touch with Rave a Rape Crisis Center and today's panelists by subscribing to their channels and following them on social media. Wava can be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wava RCC. So that's W A V A W R C C. And on behalf of Wava Rape Crisis Center, thank you all for this wonderful discussion, and I will pass it back to Haley. I just want to say thank you personally to everyone who is involved in this. I am humbled. I'm honored. Your voices are resounding and incredible. And I am so grateful for your time, your energy. Thank you for being the first time I've ever been on the front page <laughs> and my first ever partnered <laughs> charity campaign. So thank you for being here. I am incredibly humbled and grateful. I'm so thankful and I'm going to keep streaming and we're going to keep going and we'll see what happens because we just, the Poop Coven just passed $26,000 raised for Weva. So yeah. Yes. Thank you all so much that. for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.